watching us through live streaming, I pray the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the true divine God revealed in the flesh, be with you, guide you, and protect you, deliver you from all the snares of the enemy, whether it be visible and or invisible. Amen. Amen. How are we? Are we okay? Yes. Are we good? Yes. Are we great? Yes. Are we excellent? Yes. Are we amazing? Yes. Are we stunning? Yes. Are we breathtaking? Yes. Just like me. <laughs> My name is Bishop Murray. I am single and available. I am hot, you're not. That is my motto in life. There you go. Just to make you laugh. We thank the Lord, always. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there is none like him. Never will be, never has been, and for eternities to come, he will always be the one and only. In his beauty, perfect. In his love, perfect. In his mercy, perfect. In his humility, perfect. In his divinity, perfect. In his light, perfect. In every angle, aspect, corner, shape, form of Jesus, from head to toe, internally, externally, is perfect. The Gospel of today is from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 16, the last chapter, from verses 2 till the end of the chapter. I'd like to talk to you today about time. Verse 2 of Mark 16 says the women went early in the morning to the tomb with their spices in their hands and wondering who's gonna move that big rock from the face of the tomb and as they approached the tomb they realized it was already removed and there was an angel or a man in white which was an angel sitting at the right hand side of the Lord and then the gospel continues and goes on to say and Jesus Christ ascended to heaven and sat at the right hand of his father why did the Lord come why did the Lord go through whatever he needed to go through to fulfill his father's plan why was he crucified why was he buried and why was he resurrected and ascended to heaven time one of the most precious gifts God had ever given the human race is time I'll give you a lolly. You'll be a good girl, I'll give you a big lolly. A big chunky lolly. And I will go to Toys R Us and I'll buy you a big chunky toy. And I'll be Thomas the Tank for you. Choo choo! Aren't they cute? I love you, my angel. Time, my beloveds, time. When we go to the very beginning, when the Almighty God, the Trion God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God in nature, one God in essence, when He came to create the human being, He said, let us go down and create man in our image according to our likeness. And he created this man in a realm that is under the mercy of time. He created this man in a realm 
that is under the mercy of time. Why? In heaven, there is no time. In heaven, there is only one thing called eternity. In heaven, there is no time. There is one thing called eternity. When time is absent, eternity is present. And when you are living in eternity, the choice that you can ever make in your entire life is once and once only forever. When God created the angels, he placed them in the realm of eternity where time is absent. And God gave the angels a choice to make whether they choose to stay with him forever or otherwise. One of the angels decided, one of the angels decided to do something against God. And he said, I will lift up my throne above all the stars and I'll make it equal with God. This angel challenged God in his own kingdom and says to God, I'm going to be God like you in your kingdom. I want to be God as well. You're God and I'm going to be God. Yet an angel is the creation of God and a creation can never qualify to be the creator. When this angel broke or disagreed or went against God and challenged him to be God in heaven, he was cast out. And the reason, the reason why this angel who became later Satan, the ruler of the world, <laughs> and you can tell what kind of a world it is when the ruler of that world is Satan. Look at the world. It is absolute darkness, evilness, division, hatred, bigotry, destruction. Everything is ugly in the world. Because the ruler is the source of every ugliness. That's why this angel or this fallen angel could not come back and ask for forgiveness for the very reason that he existed in a realm where time is absent. When you're living in a realm where time is absent, you don't have a second chance because there, there is no next second. There is no next minute. There is no tomorrow. There is no next week, next month, next year. There is no time. Therefore, that moment is present moment always and forever. And since we don't have the second second and the next day and so on, I cannot simply come back and ask for forgiveness. The choice I make, it is once and once only forever. It is once and once only forever. That's why this fallen angel cannot be forgiven. He cannot ask for forgiveness because simply he doesn't have the privilege of time. God, out of his love and mercy, when he came to create us, he knew we were going to make mistakes. That's why he placed us in a realm that is controlled and driven by time. It was out of his love and mercy. And as someone put it this way and said, time is a distraction to eternity. Time is a distraction to eternity. The moment time ceases, you are in the eternal realm. 
So what took us out of eternity was time. So what did time create for us? Temporal life. Temporal life. God placed us in this realm that is controlled by time. Because he knew, today I'll make a mistake. He gave me tomorrow to repent. And he knew, the day after I'll make a mistake, he gave me another day, another week, another month, another year. And he gave me so many years. If you count the seconds in the lifespan that you have on earth, you have millions and billions of chances to, re to repent and be saved. When he placed us in this realm under the mercy of time, God realized that since we're going to break his word, we were going to abuse time as well. We were going to abuse time. When we read in the book of Ecclesiastes, when we read in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, King Solomon, he says, for everything under the sun, there is time. And by the way, the book of Ecclesiastes is a book of repentance. If you and I wish to learn how to live a life of repentance, read the book of Ecclesiastes of King Solomon. It teaches you how to live a repentant life all your life on earth. Not just one day or the next. Every single day you must live a life of repentance. So he says, King Solomon, for everything under the sun, there is time. And he continues on and says, there is a time to be born and there is a time to die. There is a time to plant a seed and there is a time to harvest what you have planted. Gems, pearls, precious stones, these words. What is King Solomon telling us? He's saying there is a time to be born and there is a time to die. Everything in this realm, everything that God has created has to it two sides. One side is positive and the other is negative. One side is, is light the other one is darkness. Everything that God created in this realm has two sides to it, positive and negative. Example, water. Or in Aussie, water. Water. Water is the source of life. And it can also be the source of taking life away. Water can give you life and water can drown you and take your life away. Fire. Fire is the source of life and death. Fire can give you heat when you're cold, can give you warmth and can give you light, but fire can burn you and kill you. Everything to God's creation has two sides. It is all dependent on us, how we use it, or how we abuse it. If, you, if we use water the right way, it is the source of life. If we abuse this water, it will be the source of death. And so on. There is a time to be born. And there is a time to die. Everything is done within time. What is King Solomon talking about here? If we want to be specific about this verse, it applies perfectly to Golgotha. 
where the Lord Jesus was crucified. This verse, there is a time to be born and there is a time to die, it applies perfectly to the time of Golgotha, where Christ is crucified in the middle and on either side, two men crucified, one at his ha right hand and the other at his left hand. The one at his right hand used time to his own advantage and turned to the Lord Jesus and said, Lord, please remember me in your coming, in your kingdom, in your second coming. The Lord turned to him and said, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. There is a time to be born spiritually. This man lived forever because he used time the right way. He was saved while nailed on the cross. No chance of survival, but he used time the last second and he was delivered. Today you will be with me in paradise. There is a time to be born spiritually. The other man said, if you are the son of God, save yourself and save us. And he said it in a sarcastic way. He was making fun of the Lord Jesus. He died spiritually because he abused the time. He did not use it the right way. Time is so precious. Time is so precious, my beloved. God took us out of the eternal realm and put us into a tangible realm driven by time in order to give us a chance to keep on coming back and asking for forgiveness. This was made possible because of time. I'll tell you a little story. Maybe you've heard it before. I like repeating things. In repetition, there is emphasis. There was this man, once upon a time, running away from an enemy trying to kill him. He was running away from another man who was trying to kill him. So he ran as fast as he could because you see, when we face death, life is so precious, I'll do anything and everything to save myself from not dying. If I ask anyone, do you want to die? No one wants to die. Everyone wants to live. But it's, the question is, how do you want to live? And what is life? How do you define it? See? It's not that simple. So he was running away. He reached this place where there was a very deep and wide valley. He could not jump on the other, to the other side. He could not go back. And he could not jump down because it's so deep. He's in trouble. He thought frantically, I need, I need an escape here. I need to save my life. He saw his eye fell on a tree sticking out of that valley. He jumped. And he grabbed the branches of the tree and hid himself in those leaves. The enemy came looking, couldn't find him. And while this man is hanging in that tree, hiding behind those leaves, he looks down. He sees a python climbing up the tree to swallow him. He looked on the other side and he saw a lion with the mouth wide open, awaiting for him to fall, to swallow him. And he looked again and he saw two mice, one white, one black, eating away from the roots of the tree to make the tree fall. And in the midst of all this, knowing, he knew, he realized he is dead. It's just a matter of time, but he's dead. The enemy up is waiting. The lion is waiting. The python is coming up to swallow him. 
the two mice, white and black, eating away from the roots to make the tree fall. He is dead. There is no escape from it. And in the midst of this, he sees a little bee comes and makes a beehive in the branch. And then the sun beam focuses on the beehive and from the heat, the honey begins to melt and begins to drip. Knowing, this man knowing that he is dead, he is gonna die any minute, but when he saw the honey, he wanted to find out how sweet that honey was. He stretched his arm and his finger and took a, a drop of it and licked it and said, wow, this tastes beautiful. Forgot that he is a dead man. The enemy that is chasing me all the time is death, illness. Why do people get sick? For one simple reason. Because we are mortal beings. You see, the sign of death is illness. If we were not, if we were not dying, like someone says, we are dying corpses <laughs> walking on the face of this earth. If we were not dying, we wouldn't, have, we wouldn't have ever gotten sick. See, in the next life, there is no sickness. There is no aging. There is no wrinkles. There is no unemployment. There is no center link. You are working 24-7, 24-7, uh, 365 days a year, nonstop. You don't age. You don't wrinkle. You don't cry. Nothing. Why? Because there, there is only one thing, life. No death. So the sign of death is illness. Illnesses are chasing us 24-7 to kill us. That's the enemy that is chasing me. I hid myself in the tree. The tree is this body. This is the tree. My soul, my spirit is hiding in this body. And I'm saying to the enemy, you cannot find me. Poor man, so ignorant. Just by hiding in this body, you think you're not going to die? The python, Satan, the lion, the grave, the two mice, white day, black night. The day and the night are eating away from the roots of my life. I get up in the morning and I say, oh, what a beautiful day. And then it's a very romantic night. And then another beautiful day and another beautiful night, another beautiful day, another beautiful night. And I'm so happy. But hang on. Every time day passes you by and night passes you by, you grow older and older and older. And as I grow older and older, I am getting closer and closer to the grave. The lion has its mouth open 24-7. The grave is awaiting me and there is no escape. The enemy is whispering, the python is whispering in my ears, to do all the wrong things under the sun. And the day and the night are eating away from my life. And before I knew it, I ended up looking like Santa Claus. Once upon a time, I was a little kid. Today, my beard has gone white. I look at myself. I cannot see that young boy anymore. And what God has given, what God has created, no one can stop. No one can change. So all the people of the world, with all of their might, power, money, wisdom, they can change nothing. 
They can send rockets into outer space and they can build space stations. But even if they go up in those space stations running away from this earth, they will die in those space stations. Why? Because what God has created, only God can take. No one else. No one else. Poor man. So weak, so ignorant, so blind. But in the midst of all this, all of us we know we are going to die. But the honey was so beautiful before my eyes. And the honey, my beloved, is the pleasure and the treasure of the world. That's honey. Honey, honey, make me money in this big wide world. The pleasure and the treasure of the world is so sweet. We all know we will die, but when we face the, the lust of the world, the pleasures of the world, we forget that we are mortal. We think we will live here on earth forever. Yet we don't realize death is so close to us. Every single day it is biting into us. But when I go downtown, brother, when I go clubbing, brother, when I have the sabufa khabibi in the backseat going wa wa dov dov, and when I have all the boys and the girls in a hotel room somewhere in the Novotel, and when I have the tequila, and when I have the white powder, and when I have everything, I forget, I think I will live forever. You are a mortal being, a piece of dust. Today I'm here, tomorrow I'm not. I'm not. Use time to your own advantage. Do not abuse it, because time will come back and haunt you before you know it. Time will come back and haunt you. God, out of his love and mercy for all of us, he put us in a realm that is driven by time to give us a chance to say to him, sorry, God, forgive me, God, come back to me, God, so I can come back to you. This God, his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I will put my life on the line for this statement. I don't just believe in Jesus. I know him. I don't just believe in him. I know the man. Perfect God, perfect man. He is the truth. He is, he is it. Everything is about him. That's where you stop. It's one stop shop. We destroyed ourselves. The first thing we did, we broke God's word. We were lost. God put on the flesh and became like us. The word incarnate. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to his holy name. He came to us and he said, I have appointed a time for my son to be born into this world. And I have also appointed a time for my son to be crucified. And I have appointed a time for my son to be buried. And I have appointed a time for my son to be resurrected. And when he is resurrected, he will rise and he will ascend to a place where there is no time. He came out of a place where time has no existence into a realm with time existent in order to take us out of the time and bring us back to him into the eternal realm. Into the eternal realm. And he ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of the father or his father.
there are two things that control us all. Whether you are a Christian or not, this has got nothing to do with being a Christian or not. This has got to do with being a human being. Leave your religion aside. A human being. Two things in this realm control you and I and all of us. What are the two things? One is called a, the place, the other called the time. You see, for you and I to exist, I need a place. Without a place, I cannot exist. No one can exist without a place. And without a time, no one can move. Without a place, we cannot exist. Without a time, we cannot move. Before an hour or so, well, since it's me, before 10 hours, <laughs> I preach a lot. <laughs> before an hour or so, you were existent in a place. Maybe it was home, wherever it was, but it's a place. A time came, you were going to come to church. So when that time came, you had to leave that place and move into another place. And time brought you into this place called the Holy Church. So time and place bound us. We are enslaved to them. The Lord Jesus came and he said, I will come into your time and into your place. I will exist in your realm and I will move in your realm and I will rise from a place called the grave into the heaven of all heavens where there is no place anymore, no time anymore, only one thing called eternal life. And when you are in the eternal realm, you are free. Then you are free. So you see, the world feeds you lies. Why does the world feed you lies? Because the world is placed into the bosom of Satan, the father of all lies, the Lord Jesus said. So when you listen to the world, you are being deceived. You are being lied to. The truth is twisted and changed. And like Winston Churchill said, the good old Winston, uh, Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of Great Britain during World War II, he said the, the most powerful weapon in the world is the truth. And that is why it is quite often being surrounded by a bodyguard of lies. The most powerful weapon in the world is the truth. That is why it is quite often being surrounded by a bodyguard of lies. The world surrounds the truth with a bodyguard of lies. Social media, lies. World Economic Forum, lies. United Nations, lies. World Health Organization, lies. All lies. Lies. I come from the Middle East and I'm proud to have that heritage. I'm proud. I will never forget who I am and where I came from. I love this country for opening its arms for me and millions like me. But the roots will always remain the roots. Asians, Middle Eastern people are influenced by family values. Asians, Middle Eastern people are influenced by family values. Western world, Australia, Canada, America, Europe is influenced by individualism. 
They focus on individual. Middle East Asians focus on family. When you look at the Western world, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, when you look at the Western world, the Western world has succeeded, has succeeded enormously in giving value to everything. But the Western world has failed miserably in giving purpose to everything. The Western world has succeeded enormously in giving value to everything. But they have failed miserably in giving purpose to everything. The problem is, unless you know what the purpose of the thing is, you can never give it value. What is the value of the human? That's what the Western world calls all the time and feeds you all the time. Human rights is your value. They will always focus on human rights, the value. But have you ever heard anyone of the world standing on any platform, United Nations, anywhere, and say, how about for a change, instead of saying human rights, let us say once in our life for a change, what is the right to be a human, not human rights? What is the right to be a human? That is the essence, that is the foundation, that is the purpose of the human. What is the right to be a human? Stop talking about human rights. But you see, they avoid what is the right to be a human. You know why? Because if you want to know the purpose of the human, you need to go back to their origin. And what is their origin? God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And since the world is placed in the bosom of Satan, Satan teaches the world to deny God. Atheism infiltrated the Western world. There is no God. You are God. And since we became the false God, we abused time. And there was a time for someone to die. The world is dead. The world is dead. Because a godless generation has no life in it. The Lord Jesus ascended into heaven. What controls us here is place and time. I'll cut it very short. I'm so sorry, not. <laughs> A skinny guy said to the fat guy, what's going down, brother? The fat guy replied and said everything. That's why I'm fat, everything. Everything goes down. So, time and place control us. The Holy Bible, the Lord Jesus, in his holy book, he calls time and place thorns and thistles. Thorns and thistles. Genesis 3, 17 to 18. The Lord God said to Adam, because you broke my word, the earth is condemned. It shall bring forth for you thorns and thistles. He called, the Lord Jesus called the thorns and the thistles thieves and robbers. What is the difference between a thief and a robber? They both steal, but there is a difference. The thief steals you when he comes to your own home and he robs you. But the robber, you go with your own feet to them and they rob you. That's why when the Lord gave this parable about a man coming down from Jerusalem, going down to Jericho, on the way, robbers came out, not thieves. So a thief comes to you and robs you. A robber, you go to them and rob you. To cut it short, thorn is the robber, thistle is the thief. These are the two sins that every human being failed in. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a human being. Every human being failed in these two sins. One sin is a thief called thought. The thought comes into your house 
this temple. It comes into the house and robs you. And when it robs you, you get up on your feet and you walk where the thought was thinking of. So when you go to that place, that place is called the robber. I was sitting at home with my family enjoying it and a thought came that I hit the jackpot in Star City Casino. Khabibi. The thought came, you've just hit the jackpot, brother. Hundred grand, bro. All the lights are on. Star City Casino. So I went along with the thought. I got up, I changed, I dressed up, I put the perfume, vanilla, Versace and, and Chanel and the likes. And then I drove to Star City Casino. The robber is waiting for me, baby. And I was fully loaded with hundreds and fifties. And they were supposed to be paying for the mortgage and the grocery and a nice dinner for my lovely wife. And then I go to the robber, Star City Casino. I put every penny in that robber. And the robber takes me out of there fully naked, fully bruised, cut to pieces. I come out steam coming out of my ears and nostrils like Thomas the Tank. Thought and action, all humanity failed in. There is no human being that can put their hand up and say, I never sinned with my thoughts. I never sinned with my actions. You're a liar. Only one man, <laughs> only one man can put his hand and his head, not only hand, but also his head up and say, I never sinned neither with thought nor with action. This man is the sweetheart of all sweethearts. His name is Jesus. 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 This man is the only one never sinned, neither with thought nor with action. He came into the, our time to take us out of this time and place and take us all the way to heaven where there is neither time nor place. There is eternal life. There and there only you are free. So don't listen to the world when it talks to you about democracy and freedom. They are poisonous lies. Poisonous lies. Now, how do you get into God's kingdom to be free? No more time, no more place. You need to inherit the kingdom. How do you inherit the kingdom? And this is what I'm going to finish it with. I'll give you two verses from the Holy Bible. One from the New Testament and the other from the Old Testament and both answer each other. St. Paul in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 15, 50. He says, Now this I say, brethren, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because nor does corruption inherit incorruption. The kingdom of God is incorruptible. Something that is corruptible cannot inherit the incorruptible. But there is one that is incorruptible, and that is Christ, the resurrected Messiah, the glorified body that rose from the dead on the third day. This glorified body is incorruptible. Therefore, this body only can inherit the incorruptible kingdom. Well, God created you to be his son. You cannot be his son if you are corruptible. And you cannot inherit the father unless you are the son. And to be the son, you need to be incorruptible. Therefore, there is only one son of man who is the son of God, Jesus, the son of the carpenter, the son of Mary, the virgin of all virgins. 
And this man gave you his body to have on the altar. This, is, this bread is truly my body and this wine is truly my blood. He who eats the body of the Son of Man and drinks his blood shall live forever. But if you do not eat his body and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Unless you take the body and the blood of Christ, this incorruptible body, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God, period. Do you know now why Christ gave us his body and blood? Because this is the way to inherit the kingdom of God. There is no other way. How are you going to inherit the kingdom of God? Just by believing in the Lord? You believe in him, don't you sin? You still sin. You still make mistakes after you believe in him. You are corruptible now. You need the incorruptible body that is the inheritance of God's kingdom. It is Christ. So when he ascended to heaven, he gave us his body. And his body is at the right hand of the Father. He said, if you believe in me and you receive me, you will be at the right hand of the Father. You will inherit the land of the heaven of God's kingdom. You will inherit the kingdom of God. The body and blood of Christ is foundational. It's the backbone of the church, the spine of the church. You remove the Holy Eucharist, the body collapses. Without a spine, we cannot stand. Because St. Paul says, you need to inherit the kingdom of God. How are you going to inherit it? You need to be the son. Well, how are you going to be the son? He gave you his body and blood. So, every time you come to church and you receive the body and the blood, you are entering eternal life. Now, not then, now. Every time you receive the body and the blood, you are entering eternal life. Christ is taking you out of the place, out of the time, and bringing you into the eternal realm where neither time nor place exist. And when you enter the eternal realm, you are free. Why? Because if the Son sets you free, then truly you are free. And how did the Son set you free? This is my body, eat of it for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink my blood that was shed for the remission of your sins. How did the Son set you free? He washed away your sin and He gave you eternal life. You need to be dressed up in Him in order to inherit the kingdom of God, in order to be set free. Because only one man went up to heaven, the Son of Man, not the Son of God, the one who went into heaven is the glorified body. God does not have a body, but the human has the body. It is that glorified body that went up and sat at the right hand of the Father. This body is incorruptible. That's why this body inherited the kingdom of God, the incorruptible kingdom. When you receive this body, you are incorruptible in him. You will inherit the kingdom of God, the body and the blood of Christ was given not only to forgive your sins, but to give you the inheritance of the kingdom of God. Amen. So my beloved, come and receive him in the true body and the true blood, in the truth, my beloved, in the truth, not in a symbolic way, it is in the truth. Let us bow our heads and ask the Lord to forgive us and to make us worthy, make us ready to come forth and receive him in the true body and blood of Christ the King. Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all, pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants 
and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes, and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace, and instill the walks of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith and the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will, to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, and protect you always, my beloved, always. <coughs> Just very briefly. Uh, next Sunday, according to um, our church calendar, uh, it is the Feast of Pentecost. This is according to the, I should say more so, the Julian Old Calendar. So next Sunday is the Feast of Pentecost. Uh, Pentecost is a Greek word, means the 50th. It is the day where the Holy Spirit descended on the 120 people that were sitting in the upper room and one of those 120, and the first of those 120 was our holy Mother Mary. She was one of them. So 120 people were sitting in the upper room, and the Holy Spirit descended on them as tongues of fire. And they were filled by the Holy Spirit, all those 120 people. That day is the birth of the church of Christ in the New Testament. So if anybody asks you, when was the church born in the New Testament? Say on Pentecost, the 50th day. So it is the birth of the church in the New Testament. Next Sunday, we will be celebrating the Feast of Pentecost. We ask God the Father to send us the Holy Spirit in the name of His beloved Son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit dwelt in us through holy baptism. But we're asking the, uh, God the Father to send us the Holy Spirit again to fill us always so we can have the power of the Holy Spirit. There is the, fill, there, there is the filling of the Holy Spirit and there is the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit is used for service, ministry. If you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit, you cannot talk. You cannot change people. You cannot touch people's hearts. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that peers through the hearts of men and changes them when they hear the word of the Messiah. So we need that power. Dynamite, an explosion. So when you talk about the Lord Jesus, you need to sound like a dynamite. Don't be weak, be strong. Be bold and straight to the heart. Straight to the heart. So next Sunday is the Feast of Pentecost. I pray I will see you again with the Lord's grace by the love of God the Father and by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Trion God worship praised forever. Amen. Um, this is from the organizer of the... Um, spiritual pilgrimage uh, I'm not sure if you're aware or not um, we are going with the Lord's grace this year to Israel Georgia and Armenia there's three countries this was supposed to happen in 2020 but thanks to Corona oh what a feeling <laughs> they finished Toyota Corolla they brought Toyota Corona yeah so they came up with this Pandemic, and thanks to the Japanese Corona, oh, actually, it was a Chinese, I don't know, anyway. A Chinese is MG, actually, it's a car called MG. <laughs> I drive one of them. So the Corona came, and we couldn't go on back in 2020. So it was really, you know, pushed back, pushed back, 
and we thank the Lord Jesus that um, Israel opened the borders, Georgia, Armenia, and Australia for the vaxxed and the unvaxxed. So we can fly, whether you are vaccinated or not, you can fly out of Australia, go to Israel, go to Georgia and Armenia. Whether you are vaxxed or not, you can. But the only thing is, because this was already um, organized before 2020, and we were going to leave in May 2020, and Corona came February of 2020, everything came to a full halt. The lockdown came. I remember this. I was on my last trip to America. Uh, it was a day before going to LAX, Los Angeles Airport, International Airport. One day before, a rumor came out. I was sitting at home with this beautiful family, and they said, Bishop, uh, probably you're not going to have a flight to Australia tomorrow. They are saying there is a virus that has come out and it's spreading so fast and it's so dangerous and it's deadly. People are on masks and big alerts and there's a lot of flights being canceled. And then the second day I said, it's all right, we'll go to the airport. I went to LAX. It's a very busy airport if you've been to LAX. And I go there everywhere, mask. And people are very alert, custom officers on their toes. I said, whoa, it sounds one of those Hollywood movies, you know, when the whole world is at a lockdown. So I sneaked in with my, with my terrorist looking. <laughs> I sneaked in and then we checked, God went through customs, thank God. And then we came, we flew to Sydney. And Sydney was on fire. There was a humongous bushfire. Hello, my angel. There was a humongous bushfire. And then, oops, I think we need to rush a bit. She's racing. So there was a huge bushfire at the time when we came. It was, it was end of December. Then January, then January, um, the rumors came much more powerful and then there yeah, there is a virus and it's spreading and it's doing this and then February was a lockdown we could not fly so it's been pushed back to October this year God willing there is one spot left uno wahed in Arabic wahed <laughs> who is the lucky one not luck who is the blessed one there is no luck so anyway, if you wish to come, there is one spot left. You need to put your name ASAP and be the first one to put your name because it's only one spot. So if you wish to come, please put your name down with the uh, committee and uh, we'll endeavor to pass it on to the organizer. Uh, we'll be flying in October with the Lord's grace. Uh, to be prize, uh, precise, on the 4th of October, we leave Sydney, we come back on the um, 21st of October, 17 days. Three countries, Israel, Georgia, Armenia. Um, if you haven't been and uh, you, you don't have that, you know, pr privilege this year, pray for next year to be your, your, um, your spot and your chance to go. Believe me, Israel is a must. Israel is a must. You need to see the country. I've been many times. And every time I go, it is anew, it's refreshed. It's never boring. It's never, oh yeah, I've seen. And I've seen that place so many times. I, I know Israel, every single spot of it. I can tell you where it is and how you go, I navigate. But every time I go, it is, you become revitalized. Something so special about this land. It's the land of the Messiah. Israel. Jerusalem belongs to Jesus Christ, no one else. It's his country. He's the creator of Israel, the whole world, and the heaven of all heavens. He's the creator. So, but you should come and see the Holy Land. So there's one spot. Um, <clears throat> we have this initiative Food Angel program where we hand out hampers uh, my beloved, I am asking you to support this initiative. The hamper is only $30.
But this $30 go a long way in helping people in need in Australia and abroad. In Australia and abroad. Yesterday, they handed these hampers once a fortnight on a Saturday. Yesterday was the day where they handed out the hampers. Yesterday, hamper, I was told it was worth anywhere between $350 to $400. $30 only. It's helping families here in Sydney, and it's helping families abroad as well. I'll tell you one thing. With the Lord's grace, we started um, adopting, in a way, children overseas. We started with Syria. We've adopted 10 beautiful little angels. Oh, I eat their heart. They sent us their photos. They are stunning. But the most gorgeous of all is an 11-month baby girl. She is so sweet. I wanted to go into the photo and eat her. She was so cute. We were told these families, they live below poverty. Very soon, they were, they were going to be forced to hand over their children to an orphanage place. And God knows how they would be treated there. So imagine mom and dad giving their own child because they have no choice, they don't have food, they don't have nothing to look after this child, the child will die eventually. So they were forced to hand, them, to hand their baby over. How destructive it is for parents to give their children away. So we thank the Lord. We started with this number, and we're gonna go to Lebanon, we're gonna go to Iraq, we're gonna go to Africa, we're gonna go to everywhere and adopt children. These 10 babies are living with their parents happily ever after. The parents are over the moon, they cannot believe it. They send their love, their prayers to the people of Australia and to the people, to those who are, you know, supported this initiative. And they said, we thought we were alone, but we thank the Lord Jesus. There are people on the other side of the globe remembering us. Sending their love with tears, gushing down their face. So those 10 babies, are living with their parents with $120 Australian a month. It is paying for their education, for their food, for their clothing, and for their medication if need be. 120 Australian dollar a month. If I know, I'll go and be a street beggar to help these babies. I am proud to be a street beggar. I am proud. It's an honor for me. It's a privilege for me. It's a blessing for me. It is a glory for me to be a street beggar for these angels. And I'm begging you to put our hands together in the name of Christ and in the love of Christ and help as many children as possible. You can put your names down and your phone numbers down if you wish to sponsor a child or support a child. We'll give you the details later on very soon of a, a figure. It won't be $120. It'll be less, but it's up to you. The more we put, the more we can help. And we want to spread this arm far and out there. These things are pri priceless, my beloved, priceless. We need to think of so many people are suffering and are in deep struggle uh, abroad, my beloved. In recent times, what happened to Lebanon, our beloved people in Lebanon? It's a shame for such evil, evil politics to play such an evil role, destroying a nation because of their greed and their false pride. The grave is awaiting everyone. What are you fighting for? 
Everyone is seeking the throne. They want to be in charge. So they destroy innocent people for their own benefits. So selfish, so selfish, the people of this world, so selfish. But I, I thank the Lord. We've been sending food hampers to families in Lebanon, to families in Syria, Sudan, uh, Africa, Iraq, Turkey. We've been sending food hampers and clothes over $200,000 worth of food and clothing went to Lebanon, Syria, Sudan, and other parts of the world. And we need more support. The more support we have, the more we can help. This hamper, you buy it for $30, you're helping someone starving here in Australia and overseas as well. Um, this is the last announcement, and I'm so sorry to keeping you in here for uh, as much as I can. <laughs> this is for Teens for Christ. We have a Teens for Christ every Friday at 6 p.m. here in the church. If you have a teenager, please bring him along with you on Friday to the church. We have a special program for our beloved Teens for Christ. Um, teens for Christ is organizing, the committee is organizing um, a go-karting day. Go karting, baby. It's an indoor one, apparently. I think I'll be participating. <laughs> I'm going to consider myself a teenager, and I'll be jumping with joy, and I'll go drive the Formula One. So they are organizing a uh, go karting day on Thursday, the 9th of June. Thursday, the 9th of June. Um, and it is for the ages of 13 and over. And it's going to be from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. It is Thursday, the 9th of June. Uh, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., from the ages of 13 and over. Please enroll your children's, your teenagers' names into this. Let's go and have fun in the name of the Lord. I'll be, I'll be racing and I'll be preaching at the same time. And the Lord Jesus said, you have to be careful when you turn with 100 miles an hour. Lest you have an accident and hurt your neighbor. Love thy neighbor like yourself. <laughs> There you go. I love you. God bless you. But Jesus loves you the most. And uh, lastly, just kidding. I love you guys. <laughs>